Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. This video will explain why the SNP are beatable. And I don't just mean at the general election. I mean complete and utter wipeout. So financially broke that the entire party will collapse and go into administration. It will also mean at that point there is no SNP at Holyrood, which means every SNP member would effectively be an independent and it would, for a very short time, put the Conservatives in as the government of the day, simply because they are the biggest party. Uh, and it is just one of those wonderful things. And it is achievable if the good people of Scotland vote the way they need to vote, because the SNP are, by any scale of the imagination, broke. So bad that they are actually <laughs> limited. They're on bended knee, kissing the ring and begging for funds. They cannot afford to actually fight this general election. That's how bad it is. We've mentioned before that there are no corporate sponsors and that last year under uh, Richard, uh, sorry, Hamza Yousaf's reign, only 75,000 came in in donations. One donation of £5,000 was from a living person. It's the only living person who registered a donation. All the others were bequests in wills. How many more people need to die to fund the SNP? It quite literally is a zombie party. Let's take a look to see why they're so poor and what they're doing about it. Here goes. So skint SNP gets the begging bowl out for general election as Stephen Flynn leads the way. Leads the way in begging. That's what it means. John Swinney confirmed the Nats will rely on supporters to find the election campaign. I think we can fund the election campaign with the party recording a deficit of 800,000 in its last accounts. It was 800,000 then. Trust me, it will be way, way more now. Well over a million? Who knows? Uh, John Swinney has confirmed the SNP will be getting the begging bowl out to raise money to fight the July the 4th general election. The Nats have run into money troubles in recent years, with large donations drying up, while the latest set of accounts, which is actually from over a year ago, shows a deficit of £800,000. You remember they struggled to find um, accountants to do the next set. They still haven't been done. So they are running deeply out of time. They may well find themselves with fines for non-return. It is that tight. Uh, election campaigns in Scotland can cost around the £1 million mark. And Mr Swinney has said they will need to turn to supporters in an attempt to boost the coffers. It comes as candidates including the SNP Commons Group leader uh, Stephen Flynn, launched crowdfunders to fight their campaign. They ain't going to get much, are they? They haven't got that many supporters. Uh, the SNP managed to avoid a costly leadership battle when Hamza Yousaf resigned, but the early election date presents a major headache for the new leader. Speaking to Radio Scotland's Good Morning Scotland show, the First Minister was asked how his party would raise the money for the campaign ahead of the vote on the 4th of July. Well, they have no idea. They're trying their best. The, one of the biggest problems they've got is that the bank is owed a lot of money. And the bank will be looking at the polling and the bank will see that it is very likely that the SNP are going to lose a lot of seats. Now, they know that the major income at the moment is from Westminster via the, uh, the, the short money and via the salary uh, take that they get from the MPs. If they're going to lose a lot of that, they lose a lot of short money, they lose a lot of MPs, that's a lot less money coming in. And any bank worth its salt will not extend an overdraft or, a, or, or issue a loan. So what are they going to do? Indeed, it may well be that the bank has reassessed the outstanding amount and says, actually, it would like a payment in and would like the loan to be repaid or at least a big chunk of it. They don't want to, uh, you know, leave themselves too exposed. And the SNP haven't got the cash. And then the bank could forcibly, you know, say, well, you know, we need this money and they could force them into administration. It's not impossible. Um, when it was put to him that they only had six weeks in which to raise money, he said, we'll be getting on with that. And that's what the election campaigns are about. You roll your sleeves up and you get on. Mr Swinney was then presented with the SNP's latest financial figures, but dismissively responded, Laura, don't you worry about the money. We'll find the money to fight the election campaign. SNP candidates have already started asking voters for cash. Among them 
is the party's Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, who set up a crowdfunder with a target of £2,000 to boost his campaign. Mainly, of course, to pay for the deposit. That's £500. They're actually asking uh, SNP, prospective SNP MPs, uh, all the candidates, to fund their own deposits. That's a dodgy one in some of these areas, isn't it? They're likely to lose their deposits. Uh, he claims the SNP is the only party that speaks up for Scotland in Westminster. Well, that's a load of old rubbish because obviously other parties have uh, Scottish seats. They all speak. So that's a lie. And he vows that everything you need, uh, sorry, everything you donate will be used to help spread my message to the people of Aberdeen South and ensure the people get an MP that stands up for them. This is an MP of a party that wants to close down the oil and gas fields, of which Aberdeen is ultimately only exist for. How can he sit there and say he is an MP or an, M an, yeah, an MP for the people? Well, it's clearly wrong. He's an MP for the Greens. If he wants to, you know, shut down the oil and gas. Uh, the Nats face big losses at the election, if polls are correct. Huge, massive losses. Uh, and we previously reported that the loss of seats could have a major impact on party finances with loss of short money and membership fees from MPs, which I've mentioned uh, slightly earlier there in the piece because they are desperately reliant upon it. Doesn't Now, if they lose all those seats, of course, you know, they, they sit there and go, oh, we've got no money coming in, but there's still all those buildings that need to be rented, still all the cars that need to be run, still those staff that need to be paid. So you can see almost immediately overnight some cars will be going back and some staff will be fired. They don't have to draw their horns in because, as I say, the banks will not extend the loan. It's very, very tough, and I don't care. I'll round off. We'll I'll round off, and we'll come up. How poor are they? Some seats, I think, other than just having to pay the deposit, I don't think some seats will even get leaflets. They're literally that poor. They are literally that short of money. They may not be able to put leaflets out. Or flyers out in every constituency. It's bad. They've done it to themselves. I've got no sympathy whatsoever. But it is bad for them. Um, joyous for us, though. Got to be honest. As someone who makes these YouTube videos, I'm sitting there watching these things, and it's what—it's like it. It's almost like an endless car crash, isn't it? It's bang, 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 bang. Car hits, car hits, car. Here comes a lorry. You're driving along. You know, you're an SNP. Uh, politician, and the next thing you get, you go in Sky Road, Sky Road, Sky Road ditch. You know, it it just tumbles. It's fantastic. Can't get worse, can it? I hope it can. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment. Please share the video, and I will start. Uh, I will speak to you later. Don't know what I was going to say there. Bye.